Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Frédéric. I'm from France. I'm really excited to be here. It's my first EmberConf as a, both a, an attendee and a speaker. So today, I'm going to talk to you about how to build a UI style guide with Ember. So this is me. You might know me on the internet as uh, Haki Lebara on Discord and Twitter. I co-organize um, the Paris Ember Meetup. I have Tomsters in my bag, so if you want some, just talk to me after the talk. So I work at Conto. Uh, Conto is a Parisian a French startup. We do online banking for small to medium-sized businesses. This is a front-end team. So, why create a UI style guide? That's a good question, because there are already many alternatives. You know Bootstrap, Zurb Framework, uh, Google Material. They're good. They work well. They look good. They are easy to extend. So why build your own? Uh, because you can. <laughs> With uh, Flexbox and Grid, it has never been easier to build um, extensible, clean layouts in, uh, in CSS. As uh, Eric Meyer says, um, I envy the, the new people that starts learning front-end development today because they will never have to learn how to center an element at the center of a div. They will never have to know what's a float layout or what's a clear fix. Lucky. Another reason is uh, brand identity. I did not read that book, but I like the, the cover. Uh, <laughs> so you can recognize very easily each of the brand by just one letter. So brand identity is this, but it's not limited to a logo. It's very pervasive to all your customer experience. So how to create a, a UI kit? Wait, a UI kit? But I talked about a style guide before. Or is it a component library or UI elements, a design system? This is very confusing. So until the end of the talk, I'm going to just use four concepts. UI elements, which are just components in your app. Nothing to do, it's just there. A UA kit, a style guide, and a design system. I will explain them as I go along, and I see them as a, as a continuum, as a spectrum. So this is like, uh, looks like a lot of work. I have an easy road of things I know and I'm comfortable, comfortable with, and I have this strange road that's hardly taken path of doing the whole journey by myself. But you, is it really worth it? Yes, because Helper helps you along the way. So to illustrate this, this journey, I will talk about what we did at Conto. We started as an MVP. So we had just a single app with um, everything inside. Everything is the many three features we wanted to validate the MVP, which is first, for people to be able to register their company on the app, to order like bank cards on the web application, and then to use them, of course, and see the list of transactions on the web application. So we started working. We did screens and screens and integrations, and we started to see patterns, components to be reused across apps. Something else we saw is that the register and the main application had two very different um, look and feel, and they barely interacted with each, with each other. There were actually two different applications. Once you register, you don't go back again, and then you just use the app. So we split the app into two, but then the components, so the patterns we identified, how do we reuse them into both applications? Again, Ember helps. We used add-ons. 
I like to think add-ons, they are just NPM packages but like with superpowers. They can hook into your application to extend functionality, add new components, new styles, and even modify your build pipeline, I will see, uh, as we will see later. So to create an add-on, just type uh, Ember add-on, the name of the add-on, yeah, if you want it. So as an example, up. Nah, I'm not typing. It's a video. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is the structure, the file layout of an add-on. I'm going to talk about not everything, but mainly the add-on folder, the app, test dummy. The name is confusing, but test dummy is uh, actually a whole Ember app. Every time you build a new add-on, there is an Ember app embedded inside that lives inside test dummy. It's mainly used for tests and documentation. So we have an add-on now. Let's add new components in it. So, yeah. That's my new button. I call it X button. But what's this? I see two times, I see the same components declared two times, once in slash add-on and then in slash app. Why? Actually, that's because uh, the way add-on are structured today. The app folder of your add-on and the app folder of your application, their namespace are going to be merged. So that means that what we see in the app xbutton.js is just an export of what we have in add-on, which is really like the meat of your, of your add-on. And this exports it into the app folder, which is then merged into the app folder of your application. That's, I think, what makes the, the magic of Ember that some people love and some people don't like so much is that you install add-ons and then new components appear in your app namespace. You don't have to import anything. You can still, of course, import things manually, directly from the add-on uh, folder of your app, of your add-on in your app. Some dev tips. Um, yeah, use yarn link. Yeah, when you use two NPM application together, you want to be able to make changes in the add-on, see them reflected in your app instantly. So yarn link will create a symbolic link in the node module of your app that points to your add-on. Really useful. So just run two commands. Then in your add-on, in your app, sorry, declare your add-on name in the package.json. You yeah, install, it's working. Another tip is to uh, do live reload while developing the add-on. That's a Boolean property in the hook in index.js of the add-on. Oh, not a tip, but more like something to remember. Um, when you add a new template, in your add-on, you need to put HTML bars in the dependency of the package.json of your add-on. Otherwise, you get an error message. So there's an issue for that. And I uh, think that if somebody is willing to help, uh, you might be able to pair with somebody from the CLI team. I'll switch on the issue. Now, how to add styles to the add-on? Um, something that might be a little confusing at first is that the style you put in the style folder, add-on style, will be automatically included in your app, and the style that you put in the app style folder will have to be imported manually. Once you, once you understand this, you're good to go. You can install Ember CLI SAS, and everything will work. So, do we have a UI kit yet? Mm, no, we don't have a visual way to see our components. We've added them all to our add-on, to our add-on, but we cannot see them. Amber helps again. So how do we add a visual interface to your UI kit? Uh, introduce uh, Amber CLI add-on docs, a component, an add-on you might have heard about, or maybe not, but I really like that, I find really, really useful. Once you install it, you get these features. It will leverage the test dummy app that we talked, that we talked at the beginning. 
and you will get uh, an automated, um, an auto-generated API reference, code snippets, uh, live demos, versioning. By the way, use Semver so that when you have breaking changes in your UA kit, your teammates will know, and uh, even search. So this is what it looks like when we did it at Contour. This is a live version. So all the components are usable. I have like a full screen model, for example. So now we have a UA kit. And we're happy. We could go home. This could be the end of the talk. It's just technical. But designers. <laughs> Michael from design has some questions. Consistency. What about colors? They're not the same everywhere. Typography, branding. We use these tools. You know about them? We have our own style guide, our own color lists. So they have a kind of documentation. We started to build ours. We could say that, OK, we just uh, copy your documentation on colors, typography, font families, and keep it static on our UI kit. But then you have two independent documentation evolving at the same time, and both going out of sync. Could we have a source of truth? That's the code. So how could we automate our documentation by just reading the code and building color lists, typography, font families in our UI kit? An example uh, would be, for example, all the colors we have in the UI kit. They are all the colors we use in the app. We defined a color palette using SAS. It's a little small, but just a bunch of colors. What if we could uh, somehow, at build time, take this SAS file, declaration of colors, and transform it into a JSON export, like a JSON representation of all our colors that we could then display in our UI kit? Amber helps again. Um, by using the hooks provided by the Amber add-on. So I said that an add-on is an NPM package with superpowers. This is one of them. In the index.json.js of your add-on, uh, I use a hook called preprocess tree. I cannot process, I cannot say this word. Preprocess? -pre anyway, um, I had some difficulty understanding what this hook does. So I went to Amber Observer and I used a really neat feature that's called code search, where I can see all the add-ons that use this method. That's useful. <laughs> then, okay, preprocess tree understood that it takes all the CSS files, all the files of my application before processing them using SAS or LACE or whatever. So I took my file called colorpalette.css and I passed it through uh, what we call a broccoli plugin that I called color compiler. It's not a compiler, just regex if CSS is ugly. <laughs> and then I move it into the dummy folder, dummy being the name of my dummy app, which is the UI kit. So this is what the plugin looks like. Uh, so this is the ugly regex. Basically, all it does is <laughs> transform the SAS text file into a JSON represent representation, create an ES module in text, and then that's the output of the plugin. Now, at build time, I can just import this ES module, which is the JSON file, and I can generate my, uh, my color palette and it will stay up to date always, and I have no risk of having it going stale. Uh, those color palettes elements, I took them from another add-on called Ember Freestyle, and I moved them into another add-on called Ember Color Palette, so that's usable now. So now we have a style guide, because we took our UI kit and added guidelines to them 
on colors, font faces, and uh, typography. So what's the last step? What is a design system? Is it really necessary? We hear about it a lot, mainly on Medium, uh, from very big companies. So do we need one, and what is it actually? So that's an opinion, but I think a design system, uh, what, we, what we saw before, the elements, UI kit, and the style guide, they are a subset of what's a design system. And uh, what defines a design system is written principles, values, what are our customers, what do they use our app, what experience we want to provide to them, and scalable core UI patterns. Something that we identified as being like um, minimal abstraction of what makes our interfaces. So that's not technical, that's values and stuff. What can we add? What, can, what value can we add? That's a designer's job. But I think Amber helps here also. Amber can help us build a design system. As an example, because this is where we're at now, at Conto. We, uh, we're in the process of building a design system. But Amber also is at the same, st the same, the same state. Uh, Amber Style Guide is an initiative launched by the Amber Learning Team to standardize our UI across all the Amber Learning apps. And there are many. Um, there are the websites, there are the guides, there are the Amber Fastboots, Amber Engines, there are many of them. So this is what it looks like. And this is what I'm talking about. Today, the um, UI state of the Amber ecosystem is a little fragmented. We have Facebook, Fastboot, Engines, the website, which itself contains other smaller apps like the deprecation app, the release application. Something happened a few months back, which is an RFC to propose a new, um, a new interface, a new website, a new landing page for Ember. And what I think is happening, which is really exciting, is that this initiative will be used as an opportunity to build the beginning of a design system, which would be really nice. And how can Ember help? At least at Conto, by using this feature of Ember CLI add-on, which is edit this page. For example, at work, we could say to a designer, this, is, um, this page is yours. You can edit it as, uh, as you like in Markdown. Um, so clicking the link, open the PR request, a pull request on GitHub, where people can edit the page using Markdown and even include um, Ember components. So this is the road to a design system. I think our part of our job is to build tools to not only ship features, but also improve communication across teams. And I hope that those tips and ideas are a way to build a closer relationship between designers and developers. So that's all I have. Thank you very much.